The Slow Pitch Softball Association presents the 2018 16-inch Class A Nationals from McCaslin Park in Carroll Stream. Hello everyone, Matt Dosen, alongside my good buddy Robbie Grisano, oh here to bring you the championship game between Smackout, who is undefeated at this point, and the Donuts team, who has come all the way through the loser's bracket and played five games already today. And Robbie, we're pretty familiar with both these teams, a lot of veterans, guys that have been here before. We expect a pretty good matchup. Yeah, Matty, it should be a great uh, championship game or games, depending on if the Donuts can win this first game. Um, they, The Donuts got to try and reach deep down and uh, see if they have some energy left. They've been playing all day on Sunday after losing uh, their first game yesterday. Um, Smackout, Smackout's played really well. I haven't been out here all weekend except for today, but both games I've seen today, they've really been hitting the ball very well today. As we mentioned, Smackout undefeated coming into this championship game. They have gone 5-0. and They have uh, beaten Mint, a very good traffic team, Top Fleet, High Energy, and Falcon Express. The High Energy and Falcon Express games were today. And the Donuts, with five wins already today, they have uh, taken care of the Highlights, the Pharaohs, then lost to the Ridge Rats. Then today they've beaten the Scrubs, Woodpeckers, High Energy, Park League Heroes, and Falcon Express. Congratulations to Falcon Express from Mount Prospect with a very, very impressive third place finish. Uh, the young guys played very well. Uh, they were down 7 nothing to the Donuts to get back to this game and put up a five spot and lost 7-5. to five. So a very, very, very good tournament. And also congratulations to Park League Heroes coming off a tournament victory last week at Mather Park in the O'Connor Tournament. They parlayed that into a top four finish here in the A Nationals. So congratulations to all the teams that came out and participated in this year's Class A Nationals here at beautiful McCaslin Park and Carroll Stream. And here we go, ready for action. Mike Mays Jr. will lead things off. CJ Knee on the hill for Smackout. Strike one. Oscar McClellan behind home plate. Joe Monza is the first base umpire. One ball, one strike. Mike Mays Jr., very strong young man. Ground ball up the middle. Fielded by the short center, Marco, and throws the first for the out. Here comes the number two batter for Donuts. Uh, we're getting his name right now. He's the center fielder. He's always a part of Geo's uh, fashion alerts. There's a line drive off CJ's glove up the middle. And he's going to reach base safely. CJ just couldn't get his glove up in time uh, to protect that line drive. The ball started rolling in no man's land, and he was able to beat it out at first base. Uh, we can set the line up here for smack out. Uh, leading off is Kurt Ostrom in center field. Matt Cohen in left field. John Pikes in right field. Charles Bolden, extra hitting. Jimmy DeChamps batting third with a nice ball to right center. It was caught by John Pikes. <clears throat> Good strong throw to second to keep uh, the runner at first base. And here's Ronnie Keck, who I believe was the MVP of the No Glove Class A Nationals earlier this year in Oak Lawn. The Donuts won that tournament, went undefeated. Ronnie, a big, strong young man, played for Hex last year. And rips a shot down the left field line, tailing foul. So two outs here, top half of the first. Championship game between Donuts and the unbeaten Smackout team. Smackout playing in Mickey Balestri's and Francisco Arenas's Clyde Park League. They are in second place currently behind Lose One. And then they also play in the very, very tough Forest Park League. And the Donuts play in the Mount Prospect League. And they are in the upper division there. One strike on Ronnie Keck. And a shot up the middle, fielded by short center. Throws the first for the out. Great play by Marco Macias to end the inning. No runs, one hit, and that'll do it for the Donuts in the top half of the, half of the first. And we'll be right back. And we're back here, McCaslin Park. Class A, SSA Nationals. Kurt Ostrom lead things off for smack out, long time. Outfielder, sometimes shortstop for Smackout, and Robbie, one of the most underrated players in the game of softball. 
I would definitely agree with that. Kurt's been around for a long time. His dad played for a long time for the binge team, so he's a softball lifer. He plays with a lot of energy. He's real fast. Ground ball foul to start his at-bat, so we have strike one. Mike Reese is on the mound for the Donuts. Mike Reese, certainly no stranger to big games. He has won uh, a national with a signature team in the past. Has played on a lot of terrific teams. He's played with Hex. He's played with the Roadrunners. And he's pitched in a lot of awfully big games. Ostrom tried to cut that one. Got a little bit too much and flies out to left fielder. That is not. That is uh, Steve McLaren. So one out here for smack out. Bottom half of the first. No score. That'll bring up Matt Cohen, left fielder for smack out. What can you tell us about Matt, Rob? He's a, he's a neighborhood kid. A lot of these smack out kids all grew up in like the Midway, Garfield Ridge area. Um, he's just starting to play big time softball this year coming out of the park leagues and he's really transitioning very well. Ground ball foul. Ron Keck at third base for the Donuts team. Let's set the defense for the Donuts. You got McLar Steve McLaren in left, Joe Moran in center. Mikey Mays Jr. in right, Jim DeChamps at first, Joe Pauly at second, Matt Richard at short center, and there's a ground ball to Keck, throws the first in time for the out. Two up, two down so far here for smack out. Bottom of the first inning, that'll bring up John Pikes. Art Black at short, Ronnie Keck at third, Mike Reese again pitching. Drew Rossett is the catcher. Trying to read head coach Billy Ostermule's writing. That pitch a little bit deep. One ball, one strike. Two outs, nobody on. No score. Bottom of the first. Pikes with a ground ball to second. Scooped up, throw to first, and that'll do it for smack out. One, two, three. After a full inning of play, no score. All right, we're back. Top half of the second. Matt Richard will lead things off for the Donuts team. He was the MVP of Forest Park two years ago. Lines out to first. Ball snagged there by Joe Welgus. One out here, top half of the second. That'll bring up Steph McLaren. Steph's played for many years with the Monkey team, Rob. Good hitter. Yeah, really good hitter. Uh, was really fast. He already gets a couple of steps from the left side. Um, that was a short pitch inside by CJ. It counts one and one here. And a base hit to right for McLaren. One out, one on for the Donuts team, top half of the second. Again, the Donuts have to beat Smackout twice here to win this championship game. Smackout is clean so far with a record of 5-0. and oh. Joe Pauly, the second baseman for the Donuts team, steps up to the plate. Again, Oscar McClellan behind home plate, veteran umpire. Often umps the big games in all these tournaments. One ball, one strike. C.J. Knee on the hill for a smack out. And a fly ball to right. That's a routine fly ball. Pikes makes the catch. Runner tags. Throw to second. And McLaren makes it easily. So the Donuts with the runner in scoring position with two outs. And that'll bring up Artie, Artie Black, the shortstop. Artie Blake, sorry. Artie Blake. What can you tell us about Artie, Rob? Artie's been around a long time. I remember first seeing him about 2012 with the row team. Uh, he started out as a shortstop there. Uh, he's really turned into a really good hitter. Pickoff attempt there. Yeah, CJ and a lot of these players for Smack Out, they've, they've played together for a long time. CJ, really the organizer of this team, and he's had some turnover over the years, and they always seem to be competitive no matter who they throw out there. Yeah, um, the last couple years, uh, Jimmy Moretti kind of came along uh, with Ar Arturo Almazan, who used to run the Rats, and they're making the transition from, you know, a 
Ground ball to short. Macy is up, and he gets him by a step. So the Donuts do not score after an inning and a half. We're scoreless. Arthur Michael Marola. All right, we're back. We got him. SSA Class A 16-inch championship. Smack out in the Donuts here. Bottom half of the second, no score. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano bringing you the broadcast. Mikey Marola providing the wonderful pictures here. Doing a great job on camera for us. Leading off for smack out is Charles Bolden, the extra hitter. Mike Reese on the mound for the donut team. One ball, one strike. Smack out has won this tournament before. But again, with the, the turnover of players, I have been allowed to, to play again at the A level. Two strikes now on Bolden. And Bolden with a long fly ball into right. Camping under it is Mikey Mays Jr. He makes the catch for the first out. And to speak on your point, Matt, about Smackout being able to play, that's one of the good things about the uh, SSA organization. They take teams on a year-by-year -year basis, and because of how much turnover there is in softball, they don't force you to play up out of your, you know, out of your talent level. They allow you a chance to earn a free bid, and then eventually make your way up to that major level. Here's Mark Casper, the catcher. One out, bottom half of the second, no score. Casper rips one into the left center gap. That's going to be a base hit. And Casper on his way to second to throw the tag. He's safe. Boy, Casper had two on his mind as soon as he hit that ball, Rob. Yeah, as soon as that ball left the bat, you could see how hard he was running that big turn that there was no way he wasn't going to try to get the second. So here's C.J. Knee with one out. C.J. Probably looking to uh, go with his best ball here, Rob, you think? A little cutter? Yeah, I think he's going to try to cut this left center gap here if he can get a good pitch to do it. Goes to the right side, and a nice play there, and he is out by a eyelash. Really nice play by second baseman Joe Pauly there. Mark Casper advances to third. So two outs now with the first run of the ball game potentially 60 feet away. Here's Jimmy McCloskey, the shortstop, for smack out. What are you thinking here, Robbie? I, I think he's going to go and pound this left center gap. That's his best ball. You know, he had he had one uh, the last game against Falcon Express that I think is still rolling. Jimmy, one of those players that's very steady, not flashy, makes all the plays, gets his hits. Here's the pitch, ground ball to short. And they get him for the third out. Nice play there by Artie Blake. And that'll do it for smack out in the second. No runs, one hit, one man left. After two, we are still scoreless. All right, we're back here, McCaslin Park. Championship ball game, Class A Nationals, SSA softball. And the SSA broadcast, Matt Dose and Rob Grisano here, Mikey Marola on camera. I want to thank our wonderful sponsors of SSA Softball. Of course, Rich Melman of Let Us Entertain You, Ray Zarnick of Napleton, River Oaks, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram, Fritz Zimmerman, March Pumps, Sal Malazzo, Kevin Duff, Signature Transportation, Petey Rains, Iron Horse Security, Pat Malone, McGaffers, Jimmy Moretti, Magoo's Bar, Pat Malone, did I assume that already? Pat Malone McGaffer is a second plug. Jeff Dillman with Bernie's in Wrigleyville. Pat Moriarty with Rooms for Kids. Shane Lawler, Lawler's Bar. Leading off for the Donuts here, top half of the third. Drew Rosett, the catcher. What do you think of the Donuts uniforms, Rob? I kind of go back and forth. Their shirts, I think, are actually a little bit entertaining. A couple guys are wearing these shorts that I think are a little excessive. That ball is ripped into the gap in left center and run down there for the out. Great catch by Kurt Ostrom, and we all know that Kurt can go get it on the outfield there, Robbie. 
Yeah, uh, he, like I said earlier, he's been around a long time. He's one of the most underrated players in softball. He could probably be playing on one of these top upper major teams, but he chooses to play with his buddies, have a good time. And that play he just made, when it went off the bat, I thought it was for sure in the gap for at least a double. That ball was smoked by uh, Rossett, and there you see the gloves coming into play too. Without gloves there, that ball's probably in the gap for a double or a triple. Here's Mike Reese. Pitcher for the Donuts. Mike with a nice cut ball into the left center field gap for a base hit. Robbie's one of those hitters. You know what he's going to do, but he still gets his hits. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's either going to try and pound it to right center or he's going to cut the ball every time. And when he played with us with our signature team, he led us to the national championship. He won the MVP. Where were we? Windy City? Windy City. Where we? Oh. In Urbandale. And he's, he still gets his hits, even though you know he's going to cut the ball nine out of ten times. Ground ball by Mays. Over to second for one, and that'll be the only out they get there. McCluskey to Macias for the out. That's two outs, and we go to Joe Moran, the center fielder for the Donuts. And again, you mentioned those shorts. We get a nice shot of those shorts. The women love these uniforms, let me tell you. <laughs> I can't imagine why. I want one of those shirts for sure. And Moran with the ground ball in the hole. McCluskey up with the long throw to the first, and he doesn't get him. And advancing all the way to third is Mays. So heads up base running there. He goes first to third. And now two outs for big Jimmy DeChamps. One of the prolific long ball hitters in the game. Yeah, this Jimmy, man, he pounds the ball left center. I remember he hit one out in Oak Lawn for the uh, No Glove Nationals. And a line drive base hit. That'll put the donuts on the board. Moran will go all the way to third, and Ostrom's throw is a wild one, and Moran will score. So the donuts draw first blood and lead two to nothing. Yeah, we were just talking about his long ball ability, and it looked like Jimmy took a little bit off that swing. He went to, you know, a little bit to right center. It was a great line drive and great hustle by Joe Moran to score from first base on that overthrow. One advantage the long ball hitters have, Robbie, is the outfielders have to respect their power. They play deep, so a ball that's usually just a base hit turns into a, an easy double. Yeah. You know, if, you, if you're able to hit the ball long in this 16-inch game, it opens up so many things for you to be able to cut, take a little bit off your swing. And it turns almost everything, as long as you can run a little bit, and not like me, it turns almost everything into a double. Here's Ronnie Keck, and he hits a ball into the gap, and that's going to get down for extra bases. That'll score a run. Keck on his way to third, and he will stop there with an RBI triple. So the Donuts so far with three, and they're not done yet with Matt Richards at the plate. Matty Richard, definitely regarded as one of the better hitters in the game. Yeah, I played with Matty uh, last season. He's an unbelievable hitter. He can do a lot of different things. Uh, he has a lot of power. He's starting to learn how to cut a little bit. This part of their lineup is just as good as anybody in all of softball. So this is a huge out for Smackout to try and get here to keep this uh, lead at three and keep themselves in the ball game here early on. And I think you would, you would agree, Matt's best ball, left field line, right field line. Yeah, those are his two best swings. And left field line, line drive down the line. Matty makes a turnaround first. He's going to get the second easily. That's going to give the Donuts a 4 to nothing lead here in the top of the third. Wide open. That's where knowing your hitters really comes into play is if you, if, you, if you watch softball, you notice where these guys hit the ball, and that's definitely one of the spots where, where Matty likes to go, right down the left field line. So 4 nothing now, Donuts. Here's Steph McLaren. And you're right, Robbie. This is one of the tougher middle of the orders in all of softball. Line drive caught by Welgus, and that'll end the inning. But the Donuts inflict some damage, scoring four times, and they lead it after two and a half, 4 nothing. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano back at beautiful McCaslin Park. I want to thank Mikey Marola for his wonderful work on the camera today. And I also want to give a shout out to George Bliss, who was unable to be here with us for this national championship game. I'm his replacement. 
Joe Walgus, first baseman for Smackout, will lead things off here in their half of the third. They trail 4 nothing. Mike Reese with the first pitch in there for a strike. No count here. Some tournaments we play in, they start with a 1-1 one -one count. There's a base hit in the right. That's a good start for Smackout. Advantage hitter, Robbie, with, a, with no count. Yeah, it allows you, you know, you can take two opportunities to try and hit the ball on the line and not worry about hitting it with two strikes and striking out. Open count definitely is a huge advantage for all batters. Mike Wittis, second baseman for Smack Out now. One ball, one strike. Four nothing, Donuts. Leading Smack Out here. Championship game. Again, Smack Out undefeated. Donuts have to win two to grab the championship. Ground ball to third. Keck will go to second for one, and that'll be it. So fielder's choice. 5-10 on the putout. One out, bottom of the third, and that'll bring up Marco Macias, the short center for the Smack Out squad. Also want to thank all the scorekeepers that were out here representing the SSA. Jack Angus was out here for every game this weekend. Three games on Thursday, three games on Friday, ten games yesterday. I believe this is his eighth or ninth already today. Macias tries to punch it down the right field line. Foul. 4 nothing. Donuts, bottom of the third. We're in Carroll Stream, a staple here for the SSA Class A National Championship Tournament. That pitch illegal, a little bit over the 12 foot arc limit. Has to go 6 to 12. And a line drive, base hit into center field. Wittis will make his way to third. So the Smackout team with their first scoring opportunity here of the ball game. That was a great ball by uh, Marco. That's his best ball is that right center hole. <clears throat> Interesting fact about Marco, he actually played college basketball himself. So, you know, in this 16-inch game, there's a lot of real, real athletes. Here comes uh, Zach Thompson, the third baseman from SmackDown. He's another one of those neighborhood guys. He's been, you know, part of CJ's teams on and off for the last seven, eight, nine years. Really good player. Uh, his best ball is right center here, so I'm looking to see... He should go with his best ball here and drive this right center gap. There's a line drive to right. Right fielder can't handle the ball. Picks it up, throws to second, and is able to force out Marco at second. So they still get an out there, but a run does score to cut the lead down to 4-1. to one. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Smackout. I bet if you ask, ask Macias after the game, he'll say that he got a bad read on that ball and should have got to second base. But Smackout does get on the board, as Robbie just mentioned. Four to one now. Donuts on top here with two outs in the third. Here's Ostrom at the plate. Again, don't be surprised by his, his size. He could hit a long ball if you cheat him. There's a nice cut ball in there for a base hit. So you really have to respect his power, even though his best ball is that, that nice hard cut. Yeah, his best ball is that cut that he just did. But with a lot of the smaller guys in the 16-inch game, you know, because they can generate so much power that if you don't if you don't uh, give them their respect, they're going to hit one over your head every once in a while and really make you pay for it. Here's Matt Cohen. Big spot here. Represents a tying run. One ball, one strike, two outs, bottom of the third, 4-1 Donuts. And Cohen with a little pop-up and caught by Richard to end the inning. Smackout gets on the board. They score a run after three, 4-1 Donuts. All right, we're back. McCaslin Park, SSA, Class A, National Championship game. Matt Dosen, Rob Grazano, Mike Marola. Bringing you the broadcast here, SSA broadcast. I also want to give a big shout out to George Vernazos, a.k.a. Geo, as there's a line drive down the left field line. It's going to fall in there for a hit. That's going to be extra bases. 
And a great start to the inning for the Donut team as Joe Pauly rips one down the left field line for a double. So now, Robbie, with a man on second and no outs, playing with the gloves, what are you thinking here for uh, Artie Blake? It should be an automatic ball to right field here. Either a ground ball to second baseman or a fly ball to right field. Whatever you do, you have to be able to get this guy to third base. Here's a pitch from CJ. Line drive right at the second baseman. Nice play at first after he bobbled the line drive. He looked like Artie was trying to do the right thing and he just hit the ball a little bit too good as we say. And if you and I had a dollar for every time we see that, where a guy's trying to go to right, hits a line drive to, to second. But you're right, at least he was trying to do the right. You can't get upset with somebody trying to do the right thing. And sometimes, especially if it's a guy that doesn't like to go to right field, you'll see that happen. You'll see a pop-up to second, or you'll see a line drive to second. I always say, if you're not that comfortable going to right, just try to pound the ball to left field, because if you hit it deep enough, the guy's still going to be able to get from second to third. Here's Rossett, who had a driving the left center that Ostrom ran down the last last time he was up. Runner at second, one out. This could be a big momentum swing for Smackout if they get out of this inning unscathed. Ross it with a drive, this time to Pikes. He'll make the catch. Runner will tag and head to third. So now two outs, and that'll bring up Mike Reese, the pitcher. So I would say... 99.9% .9 possibility here that Mike Reese is going to try to cut the ball into left field. Yeah, I would agree with that. He's going to go with his best ball here to try and you know add on to their three-run lead here. He's going to go look to cut left center, left field line, wherever that pitch is going to lead him. And I'm very, very surprised that they're playing the short center on the other side of second base because his best ball is definitely to the left side. Left time, last time he cut the ball in between the short center and the shortstop. And he tries down the line this time, and that'll be a foul ball. Now two strikes. Now that even though Mike's a very confident hitter, that it's a little tougher for a cutter with two strikes, Rob. Yeah, it definitely makes you second-guess yourself there because, you know, cutting the ball, if you're not very precise with it, that's going to go foul and you're going to strike out. But I'm looking here with the short center being on the right field side. He's going to try to cut that hole past the pitcher uh, into left center. No balls, two strikes. That's illegal. He cuts the ball and caught by McCloskey for the out. So, Donuts not able to score with the runner at second and no outs. At the end of three and a half, it's Donuts four and smack out one. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola back at McCaslin Park and Carroll Stream. Championship game here, Class A Nationals, SSA broadcast. 4-1 in favor of the Donuts. Smackout needs to win this game or if they force a, a second game, either or. Donuts need to win two games to claim the championship game. And we had Brian Davis stepped into the booth for a minute. Brian Davis of Signature, fantastic player. And, Robbie, you just reminded me that the vision team that you and Brian were a part of was the first ever team to win a SSA Class A National. Yeah, it was... Uh there's a pitch from Mike Reese, strike one, uh, two and one count. It's a line drive from Pikes down the left field line. That's going to go all the way to the fence. That's going to be at least a triple. Pikes wheeling around. They're going to send him, and he will score standing up. That ball was absolutely smoked. That ball had no tail on it. Sometimes that ball hooks from a right-handed batter down the left field line. That ball stayed straight. Yeah, that was a great ball by uh, Pikes to start the sitting off, and it looks like it has given the smackout team a boost that they needed to get themselves back into this game. So it's now 4-2 Donuts, and Charles Bolden at the plate. First pitch outside. Again, I was uh, mentioning George uh, Vernazos and all the great live streaming he's done. There's a base hit by Bolden. Gio's been out here all four days, and like he always is, live streaming games and bringing you the broadcast. You see Gio down the third base line, doing it for this game. Puts in so much work, him and Patty Caputo and Anthony Tyler and Taunchy. Just endless hours of work with the SSA. Runner at first, nobody out, Mark Casper. 
with a double his last time up. He's at the plate now. Pitch by Reese in there for a strike. And Casper is one of those guys that just goes up there and grips and rips, Robbie. Yeah, he's he's not trying to do anything special. He's going to hit the ball hard wherever it's going. Left field, right field, it's going to come off his bat hard. And a smash in the left center. That one's going to get down there. Bolden on his way to third. He's going to score as it's bobbled. And it's now four to three, Donuts. So Casper with two ringing doubles in his two plate appearances. So now C.J. Knee at the plate, and again, same situation that the Donuts had in the top half of the fourth with a runner at second with no outs. C.J. does do a pretty good job of hitting the ball to the right side, and I would imagine that's what, that's what he's going to try to do here. Yeah, and as he came up to bat, he actually went and walked over to Jimmy Moran, who's coaching third, and now Coach Artie's coming. They're going to talk about it a little bit here, and I think that's what they're going to discuss is – you know, wait for a pitch that you can hit and try to hit, you know, one or two hopper to second base when they get that guy to third base to score this run to tie the game out. Or, hey, do you say to yourself, it's the fourth inning, we're down a run, we're the home team, CJ's best ball is a cut ball. Do you take a chance and go for a hit here? Yeah, I mean, that's always the decision you make, you know, as either a hitter or you go through with your coach. And I think it depends on how confident you are as a hitter. If you think, you know, you're confident enough you're going to get a hit going for your ball, then I would say go for it. 4-3, Donuts, runner at second, no outs. First pitch is inside, ball one. And Knee with the ground ball, that'll do it. That'll move the runner. Nicely done by the captain, a smack out. So Casper moves to third, one out, and McCluskey at the plate with the tying run at third. And in these gloves tournaments, you know, executing plays like that can be the difference between winning and losing. You know, Donuts didn't do it in the top of the fourth. Smackout's done at this inning, and now it could become a tie game if Jimmy can tie this game up here. McCloskey with a base hit in the left center. That'll tie it up. He may go for two here. No, he'll stop and settle for a run. 4-4 four, four in the fourth. Wow, we had not much going on the first couple innings, and all of a sudden a scoring outburst there, Rob. It was the opposite. Most games you see in these uh, championship games is the first two innings, the teams come out on fire scoring a bunch of runs, and then it settles down. We've had the opposite here. The first two innings were slow, and now this third and fourth inning, it's really picked up. Here's Wellgoes. He had a base hit his first time up. Pitch in there for a strike. 4-4, bottom of the fourth, championship game. Smackout just needs to one win here, and they're the champs. There's a liner in the left center, caught for the second out. Nice running catch there by McLaren. That ball was struck very well. Yeah, uh, Steph was playing a little bit shallow with Joe being a lefty. You know, Joe hit it pretty good, and Steph was able to run it down the gaff. The glove might have helped a little bit. Here's Mike Wittes. Fielder's choice, his first time up. Very entertaining couple of innings here. And a fly ball in the right, and that'll do it for Smackout, but not before they tie the ball game. 4-4 four, four after four. Okay, we're back. Top half of the fifth. Smackout just put up a three spot to tie the thing, tie up the game at four to four. Matt Dawson, Rob Grisano, Mikey Marola here at beautiful McCaslin Park in Carroll Stream, a staple for the SSA Class A Nationals. Great facility out here, Robbie, with the turf. Don't have to worry too much about rain. Yeah, this is an unbelievable facility for softball. When we won in 2011, we had to deal with a lot of rain issues. Nice fly ball. Kurt is able to run it down, nice can of corn, and start the inning off with an out. You know, I'm wondering now, Robbie, with smack out the momentum on their side, if fatigue's going to creep in here on this Donuts team. They've already played five games today. It's been a hot day on this turf. You know, they've been up and down this whole tournament, and uh, now with smack out a more rested team, they could, this could work in their favor. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Once. Uh once you play that many games, you know, if you can score early, which the Donuts did, and sustain a lead for a little bit, you're able to keep that energy high, keep your motor running. Once the momentum starts to swing, 
back the other way, it's really hard to dig yourself back up to be energized and get going again. There's a base hit there by Joe Moran off the glove of C.J. Knee. Here's the champs with a long drive in the right. That's going to fall fair. Here comes Moran. He's getting waved. Here's the throw, and he slides in safely for the fifth run for the donut. So Jim the champs with a bomb down the right field line, just falling fair, and the donuts have regained the lead. Yeah, that was an absolute bomb down the right field line. You know, I've been watching Jimmy all day today. I haven't seen him do that once, so I think he caught the smack out right fielder off guard there a little bit. You know, he was expecting to pound the ball to left center like he has been doing, so he was kind of shaded over a little bit, and Jimmy really pounded that ball down the right field line. And he came up a little bit lame at third base. I think it's just a cramp. He's trying to work it out there. They're giving him some fluids, and I think he's going to stay in the ball game. That's the product of playing those five games you talked about earlier today. Hey, when we have a second here, I want to remind everybody that there's a big tournament coming up next Sunday at Wentworth Park that Jimmy Moretti and Magoo's Bar are sponsoring. It's a charity tournament for a young lady who's battling an illness, and uh, there's still room available. They're looking to fill four more spots, so give Jimmy a call if you're interested. Keck with the long fly ball to the left, and he'll drive into champs with the sixth run. So now a two-run lead for the Donuts. Yeah, and I think that ball from Jimmy might have been that lift that the Donuts were needing after the momentum had swung back to smack out because it looks like they're back energized, you know, ready to fight for these, these next game and two innings to try and win this A Nationals. Here's Matty Richard. Always a tough out. Base hit down the left field line last time up. There's a base hit down the right field line. So we've seen both his best balls, Robbie. Left field line, right field line. Yeah. He, uh, those are definitely his two best balls, and you can tell, you know, he's reaching down here. He, he came up like he was a little bit limp in there, too, after playing him five games. So if you're that tired, you just go with your best swing and hope for the best. And Matty has done a great job of slimming down this year. He's worked real hard, and he's in really good shape. There's a long drive down the right field line, caught by Pikes in foul territory to retire the side. But not before the Donuts team puts up a deuce to take a 6-4 lead after four and a half. Marco Macias will lead things off for Smackout, now trailing by two, six to four here, bottom half of the fifth. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola bringing you the SSA broadcast here of the Class A 16-inch Nationals from McCaslin Park and Carroll Stream. It's been a very interesting tournament, Robbie. A lot of teams that a lot of people may not have heard of before making some good runs. Yeah, and that's the best thing about this A National Tournament every year is they get so many teams, <clears throat> and you get teams from, you know, north side, south side, suburbs, city. So you're going to run into some teams you don't know, you know, you've never seen play. So you're all, every year there's always two or three teams that you see playing on Sunday, and you're like, who are these guys? And that's the best thing about this weekend. 0-2 oh, now on Macias. Yeah, you had Park League Heroes who were in the B tournament this year moved up to play in this tournament. And then you also had um, High Energy, who played well in the B tournament also, that uh, Francisco uh, Arenas uh, runs. So two teams that moved up from the B level to the A level and played very well. High Energy finished tied for fifth. Yeah, they, they won the B Nationals, and, you know, they made the step up, and now I'm hoping they make the next step, you know, and give it a shot at Major and see, you know, you really test yourself there. 0-2 pitch, ground ball to second. Macias is out on a close play. Nice play by Joe Pauly for the first out. Joe Monza, the first base umpire. Again, Oscar McClellan behind home plate. I think they're you would you would say that they're probably regarded as the two best umpires in the game right now. Yeah. You know, they're used to doing these big time games. They've done them for a long time. You know, they're very they're, they're very good. You know, they, they know the strike zone very well. They explain things to you when you have a question about a call. Those, they would, I would say those are the two best that are out there right now. Here's Zach Tops with a fly ball into right. Caught by Mays for the second out. And we go back to the top of the order. Kurt Ostrom with a base hit his last time up. Has made a nice play in the outfield. Kurt, long time smack out. 
When you think about SmackOut, you think about Kurt, you think about CJ. Yeah, those guys, they basically started the team as a Park League team, you know, and then they have started to move their way up, and now they're one of the better teams in softball. And a high pop-up on the infield, and that'll do it for SmackOut. One, two, three. And then it'll do it for them in the fifth. We'll be right back. We're back. Carroll Stream Championship Game. SSA Class A Nationals. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola. Donuts leading 6-4, to four, top half of the sixth. Pat Caputo of the SSA joining us here. Hi, Pat. How's everything going so far in the tournament? Great, Matt. Everything's going smooth as of right now. Great tournament. We had some great... Great games, and the tournament, you couldn't ask for it to be uh, any better. A few surprise teams doing very well also. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, the teams that we thought would be in the, like in the finals, uh, uh, final six or final ten, lost early. So that was uh, kind of a good thing to see some of these younger teams uh, be able to compete with some of the better teams. Joe Pauly with his second double of the game, and, and now we have a pinch hitter, Carl Fabian Kovitz. Carl, very popular player in 16 and softball. Softball, been around a long time. Very good defensive outfielder. One of the more colorful characters you'll meet, too. Carl with Hex the last couple of years. Probably going to try to hit the ball to the right side here and move the runner. Yeah, I would, I would say they're going to go and try to do the same thing they didn't execute on the last inning when uh, Artie hit the line drive to the second baseman. Carl's going to look to try and hit a ground ball and get this guy to third base to give... Two guys an opportunity to extend this lead. And he draws a walk. So now runners at first and second. And Drew Rossett at the plate. He's hit a couple of good balls to the outfield. Has yet to find any grass. Let's see what he does here. Let's see, Robbie, what we talked about. His best ball looks like his left center. Let's see if he just tries to hit the long ball there and try to move the runners that way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I said earlier, if you're not comfortable, go with your best ball because if you hit it good enough to left center, both of them guys are going to be able to advance, and it does the same job as trying to force yourself to hit the ball in the right field. He looks like he looks like he does want to go to right, though. Looks like he's going to dip that shoulder. Yeah, on that uh, second strike pitch that he took, it looked like he was trying to dip his shoulder and drive it to right field. Full count now. And a base hit in the left center. So he goes with his best ball. That'll drive in a run. And the Donuts have now taken a 7-4 lead with runners at first and third and nobody out. We have another pinch hitter here for the Donuts. Looks like Ryan Seacrest will be at the plate for the Donuts. No relation to the famous <laughs> Ryan did a great job in, in the tournament for Stan that we had last week. He was on the mound for uh, the runners-up for Mikey Marola and Richie Battistoni's team that played your team in the championship game. Congratulations, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a great tournament that you ran, you know, in honor of an amazing man. It was a lot of fun. You know, we, the two age groups, the 29 and 34s, were the two teams that met in the championship. And Seacrest with a ground ball to second. And that'll drive in a run and move the runner up 60 feet. So 8-4 to four now, Donuts. Great job. Very, un, very unselfish at bat there by Seacrest. Yeah. You know, to win at this game, you know, like they always say, it's a team game. He wasn't worried about trying to get a hit, make himself look good. You know, sacrifice yourself, get another run on the board, and extend this lead and make it just that much harder to come back for SmackDown. Top of the order now with Mike Mays, Jr., Mike's father, Mike May Sr., great guy, longtime softball guy. Been around a long time, one of the nicer guys you'll meet, fine player. And his son, Mikey, was a football player at Drake, now playing softball and doing a great job for Donuts. There's a out at first, and safe at third is Rossett. So two outs now, man on third. And Joe Moran at the plate, he started the rally last inning with a base hit off the glove of C.J. Knee. R Robbie, I think that uh, we're going to ask Joe for his shorts to give to you after this game. Think you could fit in those? No, there's zero chance that I can fit maybe a leg in both those. Moran with a line drive. Base it in the center. 
Big two out hit. And the Donuts have really opened things up now. They lead it nine to five, nine to four. So it looks like we may be heading to an if game. Remember, Smackout is still undefeated in this tournament. Donuts have one loss, and DeChamps just continues to pound the ball. Moran will go all the way to third on that hit. And that'll bring up Ron Keck with two outs and runners at first and third. So Smackout's going to make a change here on the mound. Looks like Jimmy Moretti will replace CJ and E. Jimmy, of course, would be playing in this game, but he pulled a calf muscle at the No Glove Nationals in the end of July. Jimmy, veteran players, played on a lot of winning teams, has won a Forest Park championship. Uh, good leadership, very uh, smart player, and uh, really good teammate. Yeah, I've, I've played with Jimmy uh, on the Jinx team a while back. You know, he was on that OBI team that won Forest Park. They actually beat my signature team in the championship. He's played on Flash. He's been around a really long time. He knows how to win. You know, he came to the SmackOut team two or three years ago, and he's really helped CJ bring these guys up to the next level. But I think he'll tell you his favorite year was 2011 with Rogers Roofing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that team. You guys were a good good, good uh, team. You played in the Clyde League. Uh, I think you played our vision team a couple times that year. Jimmy and his wife Jenny just had their second child about a month or so ago. Two boys now in the Moretti family. Yeah, congratulations to Jen and Jimmy. Uh, a little earlier today before his championship game, Jimmy was sitting over there feeding a little baby. You know, it's a great thing about softball. You can bring your family out, you know, your wives, girlfriends. Ground ball. There's McCloskey with the ground with the grounder. And Keck runs big, runs good for a big man. Beats that one out easily. And congratulations to you and your wife also, Robbie. You just uh, welcomed another, another bundle of joy into your family. Yeah, the third one, he's uh, two and a half months old. He's sitting over there somewhere with my wife. She's taking care of him while I'm on uh, softball announcing duties today. Here's Matt Richard. 10-4. Donuts. And Richard with the ball down the right field line. That'll curve foul. Top of the sixth. 10-4 donuts over smack out. Looks like we are heading to an if game in the Class A 16-inch Nationals here. Courtesy of the SSA, the Slow Pitch Softball Association. George Vernazos, Patty Caputo, Anthony Tyler, Taunchy. Just some of the, the names that bring you softball week in and week out and do a wonderful job for all these guys that put so much time and effort into playing this game. And the SSA is here to give back. And now Richard with the line drive down the third baseline for a foul ball. So Maddie again, going right field line, left field line, left field line, right field line. You know where he's going to hit the ball, but he's still tough to stop. Yeah, I mean, he hits the ball so hard and so deep that you know, if he hits it good, it's going to be through an infielder's hands or down in front of the outfielder. With two strikes here, I, I'm thinking he's going to try and pound this left center here. He's going to shy away a little bit from his two best swings. That ball just missed deep. So this game was tied four to four after four innings, but the Donuts scored two in the fifth, and now four here in the sixth. And a blind drive caught by Macius to end the inning. But the Donuts, again, inflict some more damage, score four times, and now lead it 10 to four as we head to the bottom of the sixth. All right, we're back here, Carroll Stream, McCaslin Park, 16-inch Class A Nationals. Want to thank a few more of our wonderful sponsors for our SSA tournament and broadcast. Want to thank Lucky's Bar, Dan Rieg Plumbing, Market Square Restaurant, Parlor Pizza, Seal Wright, Chicago Ridge Storage, A-plus Cleaning and Maintenance, and the Courier Group. Also a shout-out to Guaranteed Rate Affinity. 
If you're in need of a uh, mortgage, I know Mikey Marola could, could vouch for this. Give me a call, and we'll, we'll take care of you if you're looking to, to buy a house or to refinance. Here's Signature down six now. Two, three, four, do up. I'm sorry, did I say Signature? Smack out. I got, I'm surrounded by Signature. Signature players there. <laughs> Freudian slip, 10-4, 10-4 donuts. Matt Cohen leading things off here for smack out. Cohen with the ground ball, it's gonna be a tough play and unable to come up with it is Keck and Cohen leads off the inning with a base hit. Here's John Pikes who ripped one down the left field line for a home run to get smack out back in the game his last time up. 10-4, Donuts, bottom of the sixth. Wind has picked up a little bit. Things have cooled off a little bit here at in McCaslin Park. We already gave a shout-out to George Bliss. How many shout-outs do we have to give him, Pat? <laughs> oh, big walk there. John Pikes takes a walk, so first two men on here for smack out, and that'll bring up the cleanup hitter. Extra hitter Charles Bolden, who got a base hit, a double his last time up, as a matter of fact. And he scored a run. If the Donuts can finish off a victory here, they will play another if game. There's a ground ball up the middle. They go to second for one, and that'll be it. So right now, Donuts just playing for outs, Rob. Yeah, I mean, there was no reason to even try to throw the ball the first there. Charles is a pretty fast runner as a lefty. With a six-run lead, you know, in the sixth inning, you're just trying to get every out that you can and start squeezing the life out of the smackout team. Here's Mark Casper, a couple of doubles in his two plate appearances. Same spot, left center both times. One ball, one strike. Runners at first and third, one out. 10-4, donuts over smackout. Glad you're joining us for the Class A National Championship game. Brought to you by the SSA. Two strikes now on Casper. Mike Reese still on the mound for the Donuts. Casper with the ground ball up the middle, base hit. That'll make it 10 to five. Bolden goes all the way to third. So smack out, not going down quietly here in the sixth. Uh, that ball was a result of in these glove type tournaments, the pitcher has to maintain his foot on the rubber as he releases the ball. So it takes it, you know, the pitcher a little bit longer to get in that extra hole, and Mike was unable to get back there in time to be able to stop that ground ball. That's a good point. In the Nationals, there is no drag step, unlike most of the tournaments that we play in. Yeah, you know, if you were in a non-glove tournament, Mike would have had a step back already before he released that pitch, and he would have been deeper in that hole and would have had a better shot to catch that ground ball. There's a pop-up on the infield, and that'll be the second out. And you mentioned one step. Most of the pitchers out there, we know, Robbie, it's more than one step. It's a step and a half, too. And somehow they're able to get away with it. Yeah, I mean, the good pitchers especially, you know, they've they've learned the system. We're able to get two, two and a half steps. and We just were talking to one, Patty Caputo, that made a living on two, two and a half steps. Yeah, yeah they try to bend the rules as far as they can, pitchers. Here's McCluskey. 10-5, Donuts. Line drive down the left field line, foul. That would have made things interesting there if that one fell fair. That would have been at least a double with two runs scored. Would have made that game 10-7. Jimmy was just a little bit ahead on that pitch. Again, congratulations to Falcon Express that finished third and to Park League Heroes who finished fourth. Great runs by two teams that were not on anybody's radar coming into this tournament. No, and that's usually how it is every year in this tournament. You know, you're going to get at least two teams that go a little bit deeper than you expect at the beginning of the tournament. Smash up the middle. That'll be an easy double play for Matt Richards. Steps on second, throw, throws to first, and that'll do it for smack out. They do score a run, but they still trail 
after six, 10 to five. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola back at McCaslin Park and Carroll Stream championship game of the SSA 16 inch Class A Nationals. Smackout came into this game undefeated. The Donuts had one loss. So if the Donuts do go on to win this game, they will have to play another game here, and that'll be a winner-take-all contest. Here's Steph McLaren to lead things off for the Donuts. And McLaren, longtime monkey player. Very, very good hitter. Very good outfielder. Yeah, you know, he uh, he's a lot of speed, a lot of power from the left side. So you got you got to be able to respect this power, but you got to get that ball in and quit stop him from going to second every time. Smash, right field. Pikes is there for the out. Now I, I have to say I do dig the donut softball pants. Yeah, those are a lot better than the shorts that we've seen a couple times here today. You know, the nice little uh, pink donut going down the stripe on the side. I can I can wear a pair like that. I'd be okay. After announcing these two games, we're going to be a little hungry. We can go for a nice nice pink sprinkled donut. Yeah, I'll make a, make a quick pit stop at uh, Dunkin' Donuts on the way home. Here's Joe Pauly. A couple of doubles in this game. Line drive off the chest of McCloskey. That'll be his third hit of the game. And that'll bring up Artie Blake. Want to apologize to Artie. With Called him Artie Black a couple of times. That's because that I couldn't read Bill Ostermule's writing on this lineup. One out, one on. Top of the seventh, 10-5. Donuts over, smack out. Jimmy Moretti on the mound for smack out. Two balls, one strike. And a fly ball into center. Ostrom will make that play. And that's two outs now. And we'll bring up Drew Rosett, who's had a nice game. Yeah. He's had uh, two, three really good at bats. One thing about this Donuts team is it seems like Every single one of their guys, they're not trying to finesse the ball. They're hitting the ball hard, whichever way they're hitting the ball. Top of the seven, Donuts leading 10-5, two outs. And barring a smack out, huge rally in the seventh, Donuts are going to force a if game here for the championship. Double your pleasure on championship day here. Ross it with a fly ball into right. And Pikes will put that one away to end the inning. So, smack out down to their final three outs. We'll see what they can do when we come back. All right, Robbie, let's give a little preview of uh, two weeks from now. The SSA will bring the major nationals to Wheeling play in those beautiful turf fields. And uh, obviously there's no doubt that the 45s are the favorite to, to three-peat, but there are some other teams that are hoping to give them a run for their money. Yeah, there's, uh, I'd say there's six or seven teams that, you know, I really, are all, we're all aiming for the 45s, myself on the signature team. You know, they've been the team to beat for the last three years. They've won almost every tournament that they've entered. You know, so as Ric Flair used to say, to be the man, you got to beat the man. So we're all looking to try to beat the man next weekend, or two weekends from now, excuse me, in Wheeling to knock them off the mountaintop. Here's Pete Carell pinch hitting for smack out. And a ball down the right field line, and it'll fall in there for a hit. So a good start for smack out. And now Nestor Carrillo will pinch hit for smack out. Remember that tournament last year, Robbie, when we were down, uh, by, by we, I mean the signature team, we were down to Dynasty by seven runs in the last inning. We had a couple of pinch hits to start the inning, and we got a rally going and came back and, and won the game. Yeah, a little deja vu it's looking like here. Let's see if Nestor can uh, pull up some of the magic that our uh, two pinch hitters had last summer to come back and uh, lead the smackout team to a championship. Wind has really picked up now. Seems to be blowing in 
And a high pop-up on the infield. And that'll be the first out of the inning. And another pinch hitter on his way to the plate. Looks like Brett Kepchak. You see Artie Almas on there, the coach for Smackout. Really have to appreciate all the time and effort that the coaches put into to running teams, Robbie. A lot of them don't play. They're just out here for the love of the game and love to be around the action. Yeah, I, I don't know how some of them do it. I could never be a coach of a softball team. Just trying to run teams like I do with my buddies on weekends is hard enough. I could never do it all summer long. Fly ball into center, and that'll be the second out of the inning. So the Donuts one out away from forcing the if game here in the 2018 Class A Nationals. Zach Tops at the plate. Representing the last chance here for smack out. Ground ball up the middle. Snagged by Mike Reese. Throw to first and that'll do it. So the Donuts win their sixth game of the day. And force a do or die game. 10-5 is your final, and we'll be back in a few moments with the last game of the SSA Class A season. Welcome back to McCaslin Park, Carol Stream, Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola, bringing you the if game of the 2018 SSA Class A Nationals. The Donuts with a 10-5 victory in the first game. Here's Mike Mays to lead things off. Smackout is the home team. They won the flip. And here we go. Joe Monza behind home plate. Oscar McClellan will be on the bases. Winner takes home the SSA Championship Trophy. The Donuts have won six games today, playing their seventh game. Fly ball, deep left center field, and that'll be the first out of the ball game. Yeah, you know, if you're the Donuts here, you, you kind of have all the momentum on your side. It'd be nice to come out and score one, two, or three runs to start this game off. Really, really put the pressure on that smackout team who came into this series undefeated. There's Joe Moran, had a nice game in game one. Started a rally and ended a rally with a base hit, the two out hit. I drove in the last run of the game. Also the most fashionable player out there with the donut shorts. Well, if a softball player from 35 years ago came back to see his first game in 35 years, Robbie, and saw what the guys wear today, I'd love to see their expression. Line drive caught by Macius. For the second out, so two up, two down here, top half of the first, and Jim DeChamps, who's had a terrific year and a awesome Nationals at the plate. The Donuts win this game just based on the results of the last game and what he does today. He might be the front runner for the MVP here. And a smash base hit, and you could tell he's just feeling it now. He's just walking up to the plate and he's not even taking a pitch. Yeah, that's the best feeling as a hitter. When you know you got it going, you don't even worry about in the batter's box. You don't worry about where the defense is playing, where the pitch is. You know that everything's rolling. You're going to get a hit no matter what you want to do. How does that feel, Robbie? Because I've never felt that before. I, I don't feel it too often, except in your tournament last weekend where I did win the MVP and I didn't make it out. I did feel really good every time I walked up to the plate last weekend. Here's Ronnie Keck. He feels good oftentimes at the plate. One of the better hitters in the game. Smash left field and Cohen is there for the third out. So no runs, one hit, one man left at the end of a half inning, no score. All right, we're back here, Carroll Stream, Class A, 16 inch nationals, SSA style, and we're here with William Russ who is a really, really huge fan of 16 and softball. Of course, he's the youngest son of Bobby and Karen Russ. Bobby, Hall of Famer, just got inducted last year. And uh, William, your uh, observations so far in this tournament? You got to have a lot of hitting as a team. 
team hitting is the big key with the gloves. So as long as you hit as a team, you'll come through and win games. How about some of the teams that a lot of spectators never even heard of having great tournament runs? Yeah, as long as you hit, like I said, if you hit, you'll be a Cinderella team. Like Falcon Express, they hit, they played solid defense, and that's how they came in third place as long as Park League Heroes finished fourth. What's your uh, expectations of this game? Donuts with a nice win, smack out. Uh, they're always fired up and ready to play. Smackout's got to come in, come in front early if they want to win this game because if Donuts gets up on them, I think Smackout won't come back and win. All right, Will, thanks a lot for your thoughts. Uh, you're an awesome guy, and you do a lot for the game. You're at every tournament, and your love for the, the, the sport is contagious. So thanks, buddy. Thank Here's Kurt Ostrom leading things off for Smackout. Line drive, base hit in the left. So there, I was just talking to, to Ronnie Keck between games and asking him how he felt after playing six games already. And right there, fatigue, it was a hard hit ball, but he didn't move much there. And you, these guys have to be exhausted. Yeah, it doesn't matter what kind of shape you're in. If you're out here in the heat for five, six, seven games, your legs start to feel like jelly, you know, you. You, uh, you can't breathe as easily as you were earlier in the day, so everything becomes a big factor. Line drive to Keck, caught, throw to first, and he is double off. So big double play there to double off Ostrom. That'll bring up John Pikes. Had a big home run his second time up in, in the uh, game that just com was completed. John came over from a team called Carlito's Way. Yeah, he, uh, he was a player on Carlito's Way for three or four years. That team folded. A couple of guys came over to the Smackout team in the last couple of years from uh, Carlito's Way. It's kind of like a little merger that they had. Pikes with a base hit up the middle. Boy, does he hit the ball hard. And he runs hard out of the box, thinking double. I love that. Just looking for that little bobble, he's going to head to second. Yeah, and that's, a, that's an underrated feature that a lot of softball players in the game today are, are lacking on. When you hit the ball you know, down the left field line or the gap, make that hard turn because if the outfielder does bobble it, you can get to second pretty easily. Here's Bolden with a fly ball into right, and that'll do it for smack out. So after one inning of play, no score. I knew it. I was trying to all right, we're back here. Matt Dawson, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola behind the camera, and here with Ronnie Matriciano, Hall of Famer, who also has been running a softball tournament out in Las Vegas. Tell us about your big ball tournament. Well, Manny, we're going to have a 16-inch uh, softball tournament on Saturday, October 20th at Desert Breeze Park. And uh, right now we have 14 teams from uh, six different states and uh, just trying to bring 16-inch uh, softball out west to uh, Las Vegas. And if a team is interested in getting in that tournament, how can they contact you? Um, you can reach me at 16inchsoftballoflasvegas.com or you can call me at 815-954-9923. Were you surprised when you moved out to Vegas of the way that they have taken to this game? Yeah, I think uh, it, it's, a, it's a little bit different game for uh, the guys that have been playing 12-inch out there. Um, you know, the 12-inch game is predominantly uh, a long ball game, and, and a lot of the players want to uh, hit the ball over the fence. And, you know, 16-inch is more of a strategic game, and I think uh, it's more of a game of uh, placement hitting. So it's going to take a little bit of time for them to get used to that. But uh, one, of the, one of the ideas I have is maybe to bring the game on a field with a shorter fence, maybe a 250 or 260 fence, so that they can kind of combine things that they've been used to, hitting the ball over the fence and, and 16 in softball. Top half of the second here, one out, one on, no score. And uh, Ronnie, your impressions of this tournament so far? Well, I, I think it's a representation of uh, some of the best teams in softball in, in, in the Chicago and in Midwest area. Um, the games have been very competitive. Most of the games have been uh, one and two runs, very close. Um, and I think the parity of the game, uh, you know, speaks for itself. Uh, a lot of a lot of competition. Uh, everybody's playing hard, and, and I and I think it's a it's a testament to the SSA that that they've they've brought. Uh, 
you know, a level of competition to the game that we've needed for a long time. Well, Ronnie, it's certainly great to see you every time you come into town. Best of luck with the tournament. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a lot, Matt. Thanks, Robbie. Great. All right, two outs now, runner at second. Artie Blake at the plate with a chance to put the donuts on top. No score here, top of the second. And a base hit in the center field. Here comes McLaren, throw to the plate, not in time, and Blake will take second base. A bit of an ill-advised throw there by Ostrom. Allows Blake to get into scoring position. One nothing donuts. Yeah, as an outfielder there, you gotta know that you know the chances of throwing that guy out coming around third are very slim. You want to throw that ball in the second to keep another run out of scoring position to where a hit will give them a two to nothing lead. Here's Andrew Ross said the catcher. He's hit the ball hard all day long. So the donuts looking to make it a perfect seven for seven today and bring home a national championship game. They lead one nothing. Two strikes on Rossett. And a fly ball into left, and that'll do it for the Donuts. But they draw first blood after an inning, inning and a half. It's Donuts one, smack out nothing. All right, we're back. If game, Donuts on top. Now one nothing, smack out looking to tie things up here. Here's the catcher for smack out Mark Casper. A couple of doubles in the first game, and he rips one in the right center field gap this time. That's going to be a base hit. So Casper remains red hot, and that'll bring up the pitcher, C.J. Nee. Getting back to uh, Ronnie Matriciano's tournament out in Vegas, Robbie, you've been out there, and what did you think when you went out there? I thought it was a great time. You know, it's really... I mean, Vegas is Vegas for anyone who's been out there. You know it's going to be a good time no matter what you're doing out there. The tournament's only one day, so you can you still use it as like a vacation getaway. I actually got married there two years ago. Um, and then my wife and I, we kind of use it as like our anniversary getaway. Uh, and it's very cool to play against teams, you know, from California, Oregon, Las Vegas, Arizona. You know, meet new guys and see their experience of 16-inch game. A lot of these other states play... 14 or 12 inch, so it's good to talk to them, you know, get them involved in our great game of 16 inch softball. One out, one on. Here's McCloskey with a smash into left field right at McLaren for the second out. So Casper remains at first base, and that'll bring up Joe Welgos, the first baseman. I played in a tournament with Joe last weekend at Mather Park in the O'Connor. Unlimited arc tournament on the north side. Joe hits the ball very hard. You ever play out there in that Mather tournament? I have not. I'm a south rider. I don't go too far north usually, but uh, no, I haven't uh, made my way to that or that uh, Hamlin Park tournament. That's a big-time tournament also up there. Both tournaments very fun to participate in. Well goes with a smash off the glove of Reese, and he'll beat the throw to first. So, smack out with two outs now. Runners at first and second. And Mike Wittes will be at the plate. one nothing Donuts, bottom of the second. This is the if game. Winner of this game is the 2018 Class A Nationals champion. That ball, it's a plate. And again, if the ball lands on home plate, it is a ball. That one just cleared the plate. One ball, one strike. Two outs. And a foul ball. One ball, two strikes. And now as a pitcher, Robbie, you dabble a little bit on the mound. What are you thinking here uh, about Reese? Well, you're ahead here. One ball, two strikes. You know, you got all the, uh, all the advantage here. You know, you want to try and get this batter to swing at something he's not comfortable doing. Make him swing at what I like to say is your pitch. Make him swing at a really bad pitch. Ground ball up the middle. Base hit! That'll tie up the ball game. Mike Wittes with a clutch two-out single. 
And we're tied at one. Runners at first and third. And Marco Macias will be at the plate. You mentioned Marcos was a college basketball player. Is this his first year with Smackout? Yeah, this was first year at SmackOut. Uh, he was another former uh, Carlitos Way squad softball player. Uh, he played with the Creators and Francisco Arenas for a couple years. You know, he's he uh, he's improved a lot. He used to be really good defensively, couldn't hit. Now he's turned himself into a really good hitter. Smashes the ball down the left field line. That's going to be over the head of the left fielder, McLaren. That'll score at least two. Macy is on his way to third, and he'll stay up there. Oh, he overruns the base. They got him in a rundown, and he's tagged out. But Smackout takes a 3-1 lead after two. All right, we're back. Carroll Stream, McCaslin Park, if game. 3-1 Smackout heading into the top of the third. Again, want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you to some of our fine sponsors. Rich Melman, of course, of Let Us Entertain You. Ray Zarnick of Napleton, River Oaks, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Fritz Zimmerman with March Pumps, Sal Malazzo, Kevin Duff, Signature Transportation, Petey Rains, Iron Horse Security, Pat Malone, McGaffers, Jim Moretti with Magoo's Bar, Jeff Dillman at Bernie's, Brad Moriarty, Rooms for Kids, and Shane Lawler, Lawler's Bar. Mike Reese will step up to the plate for the donuts and lead things off here in the third. Again, Mike, no stranger to huge games, has won Nationals. Was he with Signature when they won the No Glove? He was not. Him and I both uh, were, were part of different teams that year, so we're still we're chasing that elusive No Glove National title tournament. Mike there showing that he is definitely still one of the best cutters in the game. He's shown his shown us his hard cut to left center and a very finesse cut right there over the third baseman's head. So a good start for the Donuts team as they head back to the top of the order with Mike Mays Jr. Ryan Seacrest is going to run for Reese. Mike Mays Sr. comes out, give us, gives us a chain, change. And Jr. with a smash. And it's a trap by McCloskey. They get the force at second. Nice play there. Yeah, that was a great play uh, by Jimmy. That was a tough ball to his right hand that he was able to dive on and keep it in front of him. As the runner, you know, he was stuck in no man's land. He had to wait to see what was going to happen. So once that ball hit the ground and Jimmy collected, it was an easy force out at second. Here's Joe Moran. He had a couple of clutch hits in that first game. Let's see if he could do it again. Ground ball to second. They go to second for one, and that'll be it. But Smackout cuts out the lead runner. So now two outs, runner at first. And Jim DeChamps at the plate. And Jim cramping up a little bit in that last game. We'll see if that affects him in this game. First pitch swinging again. Deep, deep ball into right center, but Pikes is there to retire the side. No runs. One hit, one man left at the end of two and a half. It's smack out three, and the Donuts won. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola back here. Carol Stream, Caslin Park for the IF game. 2018 Class A National Championship game. Smack out leading 3-1 to one as they head to the plate here in the third. Zach Tops will lead things off for Smack out. And a line drive foul. Remember, it's not where it was touched. It's not where the defender is. It's where the ball is on a line drive. Yeah, and that's a lot of things that a lot of players, you know, get confused on. You'll hear them yelling at umpires like, oh, he touched it, he touched it. But like Matt said, it's where the ball is. It has nothing to do with where the defender is or where he touches the ball at. And a ground ball. Nice play by Richard. Throw to first. Not in time. Ball gets away. But Tops will not be able to advance. Boy, Tops is running out of the box as he took a swing there and was just able to, uh, to beat that out with some good speed. So a good start for Smackout. 
Yeah, and as we're getting further in this game, it does look like those uh, six previous games are starting to catch up with the donuts there. It was like a little routine play there for Matty Dozen, you know, turned into, turned into a problem on that throw. <laughs> Fly ball over the head of Mays, and it is foul. No, fair. It is fair. Boy, there was some confusion there whether that was a fair ball or a foul ball. And it must have just landed right on the chalk. Boy, it looked like a kind of just a lazy fly ball, but it traveled over the head of Mays and right. And smack out in great shape here. Runners at second and third, no outs. I thought you were handing me a compliment there, Robbie. <laughs> so... To your point earlier, talking about, you know, even though Kurt's a little guy, it looked like the right fielder was kind of cheating him a little bit, and he was able to hit that ball over his head for the double. Here's a ground ball by Cohen. That'll score a run, and Cohen beats it out. Boy, Richard was kind of in no man's land there. He, he looked at home, and then he looked at first, and Cohen runs very well, and he beat the throw. So it's four to one now, Smack Out. Runners at first and second. John Pike's at the plate, red hot. And Smack Out in real good shape here, especially if they could tack on another run or two. Smack Out's had a really crazy year, Robbie. They're, they've played very well in the Clyde Park League as Pike's hits a high pop up. That'll be an infield fly rule. That's a big out for Donuts. The runners can't advance. They've played very well at Clyde Park and have really, really struggled at Forest Park. And uh, But they're showing that they are one of the better teams around. Yeah. Uh, let's, I know going into the season, talking to CJ, you know, they've, they've had some guys who could play certain nights, some guys who couldn't. And play, playing in the Forest Park League myself, it seems like every night they have like two or three different guys out there playing. So you can tell now this weekend when they got their full assortment of guys. Ground ball by Bolden, fielder's choice. So runners at first and third now with two outs. Yes, I was talking to Jimmy Moretti also, and he said that they've had some injuries uh, and, you know, work with work guys' work schedules. So as you mentioned, different players out there in the in the Forest Park League. At Clyde, they seem to have their, their full contingent of, of players, and they've played very well. So they're putting it all together this weekend, that's for sure. You can tell when they got their full assortment of guys like they do this weekend, you know, that they can play with just about anybody, especially at the, you know, A level. Here's their hottest hitter of the day, Mark Casper. He has just been ripping the ball left center, right center all day long. Two outs, big run there at third. And Casper with a shot, but right at center fielder Moran to retire the side. So the Donuts do a nice job of getting out of a first and second, nobody out jam. Smack out only able to come up with that one run. 4-1 smack out after three. We're back, top half of the fourth. Donuts trailing 4-1. Ronnie Keck, Matt Richard, Steph McLaren do up for the Donuts. Let's see if the Donuts have one last push after playing six games so far this afternoon. Actually, they started at nine o'clock this morning. A lot of softball in a short period of time. Nice ball by Ronnie Keck. Nice cut line drive. Jimmy McCluskey made an unbelievable attempt at getting it. It went off the tip of his glove. Ronnie starts this inning with the donuts with a base hit. With Matty Richards coming up, this is what we all say is the meat of the order. You know, these guys, these guys here batting in the middle, they're just as good as anybody in all of softball. Let's take a look at the outfield. Pike's right on the line and right, and that's where he goes. Pike's on his horse. Can he get there? No. Foul ball. Boy, Maddie Richard, a very confident hitter. Pike's was no more than 20 feet off the line. He still tried to beat him out there. Yeah. You know, like we talk about, if that's your best ball and you're confident enough with it that if you hit it good, you're still going to get it, you might as well just keep going for it. Instead of forcing yourself to do something you're not comfortable with, guy on first, you wind up missing a ball, hitting the ball right to the short center for a Taylor made double play. Being a corner outfielder in a tournament is tough, Robbie. People forget that you've got to chase foul balls along with all the balls that are in play. Yeah, 
Luckily, I've always been a bigger guy, so I've never had to play the outfield. But I, I can, you can see as you go along in tournaments, the left and right fielders start going after them fall balls a little bit slower. And again, to right, this one right at Pikes. And that'll be the first out. And of course, our cameraman, Mikey Marola, one of the best outfielders in the game. But he's a center fielder. He takes it easy out there. Doesn't, 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 doesn't have to shag the, the foul balls all tournament long. One out here, Steph McLaren, runner at first. Especially on a team like his, you got two really fast outfielders on the corners. He doesn't have to do anything unless it's hit right at him. Of course, Mikey on the Hex team. Hex, of course, won the North South Challenge two years in a row, 2016, 2017. Steph McLaren again to right, and Pikes again right there. So Keck able to tag up and get into scoring position with two outs. That'll bring up Joe Pauly, who's hit the ball very well today. X is one of those teams that we were talking about earlier come uh, Labor Day weekend out in Wheeling. You know, they're one of the teams that they've played the 45s really, really well the last couple of years. You know, so they're one of them teams that are looking at, you know, trying to take the 45s crown and become the best team in softball. I believe they beat them twice in like a week to 10 day period and only gave up one run, was it Mike, in the two games? So uh, they definitely are not afraid to take on the defending, two time defending champions, that's for sure. 4 1 smack out, top of the fourth, two outs, runner at second. One ball, one strike to Joe Pauly, the donut second baseman. Two balls and a strike. Pauly with a base hit. Keck's going to score. And it's now a two-run game. Big two-out hit by Pauly. Yeah, that was a huge hit to come up in the uh, top of the fourth, cut this lead down a little bit, give yourself and your team that little boost of energy that you, they seem to be lacking after they've given up the lead. You know, And with two outs, you never know. You could string a couple, two or three hits together and make this a 4-4 game in no time. Here's Artie Blake. Had a big two out hit earlier. So this Donuts team, just when you think that they may be running out of gas, they make a little push. Line drive caught by Wellgos to retire the side. The Donuts pick up a run after three and a half. It's 4-2 smack out. We're back. Carroll Stream, McCaslin Park. Bottom of the fourth, smack out up 4-2 here in the if game to determine the Class A National Champions. SSA broadcast, Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, and Mikey Marola. CJ Nee leading things off for Smackout. And he walks on four pitches. The dreaded leadoff walk, as Gio uh, always says on his broadcast. I'm sure he's over there broadcasting on Facebook Live. He here on the third baseline. I'm sure he had that to say after that walk by Mike Reese. Of course, Geo live streaming games all weekend long. has done a phenomenal job all year. Is really taking softball to the next level. Ground ball is short. They go to second for one, and that'll be it. So the Donuts cut down the lead run. That'll bring up first baseman Joe Welgos with one out. Smack out on top, 4-2, bottom of the fourth. Smack out again, has won the A Nationals a few years ago, but with a, primarily a, a whole different cast. Yeah, uh, the team that won it a couple years ago, you know, had a uh, couple different guys. One that's on that Hex team we mentioned earlier, the shortstop, Chris Stu Miller. Um, you know, they've lost, from that team, they've lost about six or seven guys and have replaced them with, like we talked about, a couple guys from that Carlitos Way and squad team from the Berwyn area. And a high fly ball in foul territory. Nice catch by Mike Mays Jr. for the second out. So that'll bring up Mike Wittis, who had the big hit his last time up. Yeah, 
came up huge with two outs with a base hit up the middle that got uh, past Mike Reese to really start the uh, rally for that smackout team to give them the lead. Wittis with a foul ball, right side. So the weather has changed here. We started off with bright sunshine, very warm temperatures, and it's now totally overcast and a little windy. First game today started off very slow. It was 0-0 into the third inning, and all of a sudden we end up with a 10-5 final, and so far in this game it's been a, been a hitter's day. Yeah. You know, uh, it seemed like both teams have come out really energized for the championship game. You know, a lot of guys are going with their best balls, hitting the ball hard, and uh, we're getting a lot of action here early on. Wittis with a little pop-up, and that'll do it for Smackout in the fourth. As we head to the fifth, it's 4-2 Smackout. Andrew Rossett will lead things off here for Smackout. In their half of the fifth, they trail 4-2, to two, if game, SSA Class A National Championship. Winner of this game gets to hoist the trophy as this year's champion. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola bringing you the broadcast, SSA broadcast, as we always do on championship day. We're just missing one familiar voice. That's George Bliss who is taking a much-deserved vacation. Ground ball is short. McCloskey up with it. Nice play. Throw to first in time. That was a good start for the Smackout team. You know, with a two-run lead, you know, you want to be able to make all the basic plays, you know, and uh, really force these donuts to work really extra hard to dig deep after playing six games earlier today to fight their way back into the championship game. Here's Mike Reese. He singled his last time up. Floated a nice little cut over the third baseman's head. Mike loves to play. There's not a weekend that goes by where he's not playing softball somewhere. One of the better pitchers in the game. Yeah, Mike's a really good pitcher. Nice cut right at the short center. Marco at the play. Throw to first, and it's an out. Second out of the top of the fifth inning. Yeah, again, smack out playing Reese on the first base side of second base with their short center and Mike tried to cut it between the second base bag and the shortstop just missed it there and hit it right to Macias. So two outs and that'll bring us up to the top in Mike Mays Jr. And a pop up in the infield. So the Donuts go quietly in their half of the fifth. It's 4-2 smack out. Back in Carroll Stream, McCaslin Park, Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mike Marola, bottom of the fifth, and Marco Macias, who had a two-run triple his last time up. This time pops it up, and Moran will take care of that one for the first out. Crazy game, though, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> As a spectator, maybe somebody that's never played the game, you look out there and you see all these gigantic holes, and it's like, why don't they you hit the ball there? Why don't you hit the ball there? You walk into the batter's box, and all of a sudden everything shrinks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I've talked to a lot of people, especially I was out in New Jersey for a month for work. You know, they've never seen the game, and I was showing them some of our live broadcasts that Geo does, and they asked the same thing, like, why? It looks so easy to hit the ball. I'm like, yeah, everyone thinks it's really easy just to step in and hit the ball wherever you want, but when you got a good pitcher up there working and making you swing at pitches you don't want to swing at, everything becomes a lot more difficult. Really makes you appreciate the, appreciate the great hitters in this game that have the confidence to hit the ball, no matter what the count, no matter what the situation. There's a long drive, and that beats the left fielder, McLaren. Zach Topps on his way to third, and they're going to wave him, and he's going to score standing up. That ball was tattooed by Topps. Yeah, you know, like we talked about with Kurt, Topps is another smaller guy in, in stature. Left fielder played him a little bit shallower than he would normally play somebody. Topps really leaned on that one and was able to hit it over his head. You know, I think the left fielder in them six games are starting to wear on his legs. By the time he got to pick the ball up, it squirted out of his hands and it was an easy home run. Now the top of the order. Here's Ostrom. 
with a ground ball and a nice play there by Keck for the first out. Second out, pardon me. Here's Matt Cohen, the left fielder. So a, a big insurance run there for Smack out because we mentioned that Donuts in their half of the sixth have their meat of the order coming up. Yeah, they have their uh, two, three, four hitters coming up. So, you know, if you can get out of this inning with just giving up the one run, you know, most teams will say, let, you know, let me get my best hitters and give me a chance to win the game. Cohen, ground, ground ball, and Keck takes care of him. And that'll do it. But smack out with a home run by Zach Topps. Increases their lead to 5-2 after 5. Joe Moran, Jim Deschamps, Ron Keck do up here in their half of the six. There's a line drive to center field, and Ostrom is there for the first out. Boy, I remember playing back in the early 90s, and Patty Caputo used to always say the first one's the big one. Yeah, most innings, you know, the first one is the big one. If you can keep that leadoff hitter off base, you know, it puts a ton more pressure on the second, third, fourth hitters of the inning to try and get something going. You, know, you got to love this Class A level Robbie, you, you've had guys in this tournament, all age groups. You've had teenagers playing. You've had guys in their 60s. Steve Kirby, 67 years old. Your uncle, Mickey Balestri, playing well into his 60s playing in this tournament. A number of 50-year-olds, including about six guys on my traffic team. But it, it's a, it's just a tremendous level of competition here. Again, you got decades and decades of players playing against each other. There's a nice snag by knee for the second out. But this level really gives guys that really want to still play softball the chance to, to compete at a top level. Yeah, the A level, you know, it, it's very competitive across the board. Every year you come to this A Nationals, like we talked about, there's two or three teams that are going to surprise you. And at the start of it, there's seven to 12 teams that can wind up winning the thing in the end. Where you go to some other levels, there's four or five teams that can really win the tournament. Line smash by Keck. So he keeps the inning alive, and that'll bring up Matt Richard. And again, the tying run on deck, so don't count this donut team out. They get hit with anybody. So let's see what Matty Richard wants to do here. He tried the right field line his last time. Pikes is right on the line again. Left field line is his other great ball. Let's see what he does here. And he goes to right again. Does Pikes have room? Yes, he does. And that'll do it for the Donuts in their half of the sixth. Still 5-2 smack out. The heart of the order due up here for smack out. John Pikes, Charles Bolden, Mark Casper. In their half of the sixth, they lead 5-2. This is the IF game, 2018 Class A National Championship. Thank you for joining us on our SSA broadcast. Matt Dosen, Rob Grisano, Mikey Marola. As Pikes lines a shot to second base, but right at Pauly for the first out. So smack out, boy, one run would be huge here, Robbie. Yeah, if you're smack out, if you can scratch for one or two runs, it, it will really deflate that Donuts team, make it, make it really hard for them to come back in the top of the seventh. Donuts again playing in their seventh game of the day. And Bolden with a high fly ball into right. And Mays will make the catch. So two up, two down. And that'll bring up Mark Casper. He's hit the ball hard all day long. What do you know about Mark? He's a neighborhood kid. Uh, I believe the first time Smackout won the uh, Nationals, he was the batting champ or first team All-American. He's a really, really strong, powerful hitter to both gaps. Ground ball up the middle, snagged by Reese, and that'll do it. One, two, three, four, smack out. Last chance for the Donuts coming up. They trail 5-2. Yeah. All right, we're back. Steph McLaren, Joe Pauly, Artie Blake do up for Donuts. They trail by three. They need a couple of base runners here. Ground ball off the glove of Knee. Throw to first, not in time. That's a great start for the Donuts. And now you've got a couple of guys that have had big hits here in Pauly and Blake. Not to mention Andrew Rossett, who follows. Not really an easy out in this lineup. No, 
everyone in the Stonehouse lineup has the potential, you know, to hit a ball deep to the gaps and change the course of a game. So for uh, McLaren to be able to start this inning off with a base hit is huge to give this Donuts a chance to come back and take the lead in this game. Three and zero, oh. tying run on deck, and ball four. So a four pitch walk to Pauly, and now Artie Blake represents the tying run for the Donuts. So Jimmy Moretti is going to walk out, have a little discussion. What do you think he's going to say to CJ? I think he called this timeout just to be able to pull everyone together. You know, tell CJ to take a breath. It looked like in, after he. Um, gave up the base at the start of the inning that he started to get a, you know, a little bit nervous, a little bit tight. So Jimmy's just walking out there to calm everything down, slow it down. You know, should be telling him, like, listen, you pitched us to a three-run lead here in the first six, six innings. Just keep doing what you were doing for the first six innings. Let's work to get it out here and try to end this game. And there's a strike. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. 5-2 smack out. Top of the seven. Blake with a Shot off the glove of Knee. That's going to score a run. There goes Pauly to third. And the Donuts, not done yet. They trail it now 5-3. to three. Yeah, and I know as a pitcher, it's kind of your instinct to reach out for that one. But if CJ was able to keep his glove down, it looked like that was going to be right at Jimmy, the shortstop, for a possible double play. <laughs> You know, so the, the, don the Donuts have some life here. First and third, nobody out, trailing by two. Andrew Russ it up. He's hit the ball hard every time at bat in these two, these two championship games here. So with one swing of the bat here, he could really give the Donuts the lead. And they move the short center over to the right side, and Russ has hit that left center gap all day long. So interesting move here. Maybe they think that he's just going to try to advance one and get this run home from third. Yeah, and I, from watching the pitch here, it looks like CJ's trying to lay down that outside corner to kind of force him to hit the ball to the right side. Two balls and a strike, nobody out. First and third. Two run lead for smack out. Two balls, two strikes. Ross it with the fly ball. That'll drive in a run, but that will not advance the runner. So it's a 5-4 game now with the runner at first and Mike Reese is due up. That's a huge out. Yeah, if you're smack out, that's perfect for what you want. It was first and third. That run from third is going to score nine out of ten times. You just want to make sure you get an out and keep that runner at first base to keep a, a possible double play intact here to end this game. So it's funny to watch guys who always have a, a home plate ritual before they get in the box. Mike Reese always clears the dirt when he, in the batter's box. Obviously, there's no dirt here yeah. on the turf, but he d did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, all of us have uh, little quirks that we like to do, including myself. You know, We all have something that can relax us before we go up to the plate. Reese with a shot. Oh, caught by Wittes at second base for the second out. Great play. That could possibly be the game winner right there, that play by Wittes. If that ball gets through, it's easily going to be first and third with the uh, top of your order coming up. So you're feeling, you would be feeling really good about yourself if that ball would have found its way through. Now here's a big spot for a young guy, Mike Mays Jr. Recent graduate last year of Drake University, was a football player. In a big spot here. Big, strong, fast young man. One strike, smack out, two strikes away, one out away. Mays with a line drive to left, and it is caught by Cohen. And smack out is your 2018 SSA Class A National Champion. The greatest feeling in the world is winning a tournament like this. And you can tell, you can tell by that smack out team how excited and happy they are to be able to close this one off. Very, very entertaining two games here, Robbie. Uh, Donuts, obviously, with their seven games today, played a wonderful game in game one, 
Game two, SmackOut took the early lead, and uh, the Donuts just kept fighting, and you got to give them credit. Despite their seventh game, they were right in it to the last pitch. Yeah, you know, they played really tough in both games today. You know, I think on a couple couple different bounces here and there, we could have had a different result today, but credit goes out to the Donuts for fighting from 9 o'clock this morning until this end of the championship game. All right, we'll be back with a couple of interviews right after this. Day, the SmackOut team, your 2018 Class A National Champions. We're here with Coach Artie Almazan and uh, one of his fantastic players, Mark Casper, who had a wonderful tournament. Artie, let's start with you. Uh, first off, congratulations. Tell me what you're thinking about right now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, your, your thoughts and what's going through your mind right now? Um, um, I'm glad for these guys. We played tough. Uh, we had a, like a really tough uh, beginning of the, uh, the year, um, but uh, we fought through. We won, we won the games that we had to. We lost that first game in the championship. We came back, and we played hard, and, and we won. So. And it's uh, the second time around for the SmackOut team. Winners a couple of years ago in this tournament. And you got to give credit to, to CJ, who's kept uh, a couple of core guys together and have played together for a lot of lot of years. And you guys just able to keep adding on and keep having success. Yes. Um, yeah, CJ is a great guy. He keeps these the core guys, Mark, uh, Tapling. Tapling wasn't here. Um, we have uh, Cohen. We have Brad Wittes, Kurt. Um, and, yeah, I mean everybody. Everybody was involved in uh, this championship. Top set, top yeah. big right. home run. Congratulations! Let's go celebrate. I'm gonna. I'm bringing Mark here. All right, Mark. Congratulations! You had a, a whale of a tournament. My son was keeping score in a couple of your games earlier in the tournament. And said, "Dad, this guy with the beard, man, he just rips the ball." <laughs> so congratulations! Tell me what you're thinking right now. You know, first off, um, hats off to the Donuts. They're a hell of a team, and um, the way they came out that first game, we were we were shitting our pants. Oh. We were, they, they were scaring us that first game, so hats off to them. They did a fantastic job. They fought all the way to the end. But just based on this year, we had a rough start, but I believed in this team and what we had and what we were capable of doing, and I thought we proved it today. We proved it today and all weekend, what we could do. Tell me about what you guys talked about after that first game, after the Donuts won 10-5. These guys played like eight games already. When are they going to run out of gas? No. We uh, – we – we believed in ourselves the whole way. Losing that first game, as soon as that last out was made, we were ready to go. We were ready to come out and compete and win the next game. So we didn't let that affect us too much at all. Well, congratulations, your national champs. How's it feel? Feels great, baby. Go smack out. 2018. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Hey, is CJ around or Jimmy? CJ. Grab CJ too. Come on, Jimmy. We're going to bring in Jimmy Moretti here. Jimmy's jumped on the, the SmackOut uh, wagon the last couple years. A uh, great sponsor of the SSA. Congratulations on a, on a wonderful weekend. Yeah, we actually played well this weekend. Hit the ball, did everything we were supposed to do, and uh, good things happen. You know how that works. And I was just asking, Mark, what, you, what did you guys talk about after that first game, after Donuts came out and, and, and won 10-5? I don't know if I could say this on the air, but we our whole team chugged a beer. <laughs> That's exactly what we did. You're all of age, right? We're all of age. Um, but we all chugged a beer. We just had to take the edge off, I think. After that first game of getting slapped around a little bit, you know, you gotta you gotta change things up, and I think it was probably the best thing we did because it worked out. Well, congratulations. We talked about your tournament next weekend. How could people get a hold of you if they want to participate? Yeah, I mean, the draw is tomorrow night at eight o'clock, but obviously we still have about 24 hours. Um, they can go on Facebook at Dana Strong hashtag Dana Strong Magoo's softball, or they can just uh, email me directly, Jim Magoo on uh, Facebook. Uh, we have other ways of you know of getting on as well with Facebook and other things too so just just contact me or get a hold of me somehow all right congratulations go celebrate with the boys have a beer where'd CJ go I wanted to talk to CJ all right we're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna get we're gonna get CJ one more time $200 entry fee for for Dana's tournament next week so CJ knee championship pitcher uh you know in a, a sport where guys like to jump ship and uh, are always looking for the next best thing I, I've, I've got to hand it to you cj you're able to keep your core guys are around for a lot of years and uh just a, a whale of a job this weekend yeah so yeah it's just we just all friends we actually grew up all in the same neighborhood some of the guys i actually went to grammar school with we just play every day and just play hard and just play for fun and 
it's hard to get guys with injuries and getting guys out. I haven't got jobs and everything just switches everything up. But just get on the get on the horn, just get guys together and a lot of us play, like to play ball. So. And it's nice when you could keep your team in the winner's bracket, obviously. The Donuts had to play seven games today. You won a couple of games. You won a tight game against us uh, yesterday. And uh, when you're a little bit fresher, I think it, it took its toll on the Donuts in that last game. Yes, it's, I mean, they hit, I think they were the seventh game. Anyone playing seventh games, it's terrible. And people are getting older. People are beat up. And <laughs> great job on their part, seven games. We only had to play three. But that's the big thing about the winner's bracket. Congratulations on your second Class A championship. Thank you. All right, we're going to bring in Robbie Grisano to wrap things up here. Mikey Marola, I want to thank you for a job well done. And uh, Robbie, a fantastic tournament, very entertaining two games here. Your final thoughts? Yeah, it was, uh, it was an unbelievable uh, championship series. Um, like CJ just mentioned, credit goes to the Donuts. We're playing seven games, not giving up, and they fought until that last out. You know, one or two hits in that last inning, and it's a whole different ball game. So congrats to Donuts for making a nice run today, and then congrats to the champion Smackout for playing great all weekend. So I'm sure we'll see both these teams in two weeks in Wheeling. Remember the SSA Major Nationals taking place on Labor Day weekend. Make sure you go out, you support softball, you go watch these guys. Phenomenal job, great athletes, wonderful people. want to thank everybody associated with the SSA. want to thank George Bliss. And again, thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Mike. And uh, keep watching softball. Keep supporting this great sport. See everybody.